As they say, April showers bring May flowers, and April reading brings me joy. That was really, really lame. Hello and welcome to my channel. It is going to be a TBR. I am so excited that I have been keeping up with posting my TBRs and wrap-ups. Do I ever stick to the TBR completely? Probably not. But I feel like these videos are a good way to talk to my audience about the books that I'm interested in and they're just such a staple. I really enjoy making them so I'm very excited to be making them again and making them consistently again. So April is a very special month to me because it is my birth month. I'm going to be 28 this year which is old. <laughs> Way older than I was when I started this channel. I don't know if when I started this channel I knew I would keep doing it for so long. I was like must have been like 22, 23 when I started this because it was just after I graduated college. Yeah so it's crazy crazy. Last month I set a very fantasy romance TBR and it was so fun but I realized that my mood definitely does shift so I want to try and make my TBRs as flexible as possible and not overload myself. Of course I probably have more books on this TBR than maybe I should with that approach but that's how it goes but I have kind of varied the form of the media of all of these books so that they can suit my different moods because I also tend to have different types of books going at the same time. So I recently just got back into audiobooks, so we'll have some audiobooks. I have some Kindle books, which I tend to read at work and like on the go, and then I have some physical books because I've really, really been wanting to get to more of my physical collection. I feel like I've been kind of neglecting it, but these books that are physical and I guess more in depth aren't as like easy to breeze through as like KU fantasy romance and like romance books so I don't tend to pick them up all the time but I need to be better about that because like these types of books they have my heart and soul. So with that being said let me get into the many varied different things that I want to read in the month of April. So one series that I've been meaning to read forever that I finally got around to reading in March is Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. So these are the really old original covers and these are my friend Taz's books. Please go check out her socials. I'll have them like below but she kindly lent these to me. Um, I just like love like the classic YA feel of them but I actually am going to give them back because I decided to read it on audio and that was like a pretty pretty good decision I think because they're pretty easy to digest on audio. If a book is like too wordy it's not always a super easy audiobook experience but I enjoy them on audio and so I'm going to listen to them during my commute and they're really really fun. It's just giving me like all the nostalgic YA vibes that I was looking for when I picked them up and I picked it up because I want to read the TV series. So I will have my March wrap up posted probably next week so be on the lookout for that to hear my full thoughts on Vampire Academy but on my TBR for March I have the second and the third book. So I have Frostbite and Shadow Kiss. So I'm like back in my like 2000s YA era because I'm so excited for these. And again, like I said, I'm gonna also watch the TV show. I read this book in like a day because I was working for a long time, like solo work in the lab. So I was able to just listen to the audiobook and then like as I was doing chores and stuff like that. So I blew through this first book, but I had so much fun. And let me tell you about it. So I had actually never read this in the heyday of vampire books. There are some like older YA books I would love to go back and read that have vampires in it, like Blue Buds by Melissa De La Cruz. Like that was my series. But for whatever reason, I never picked this one up. But it is time. It is time to be back in the vampire era, especially considering it has a TV show now. So we have Lissa Dragomir, and she is a Leroy princess, which is the royal vampire princess. And the Moroi are mortal vampires that are born and they attend this like vampire academy where they like learn about all their skills and they're like very peaceful and their magic comes from the earth. They have elemental magic and they only want to use it in peaceful ways. However, they are being hunted by what's known as the Strege, which are like the traditional immortal scary vampires. They both have to drink blood though. Um, and so like a Strege is like obviously like disconnected from their humanity because they're immoral and they like when they feed they like are they go hungry and scary and 
they want to hunt the Moroi and eat them. And then you also have the Damphir, which is a half human, half vampire. And they are what's known as the guardians. And so they are the ones that are trained to like protect the Moroi so that the Strege don't get them. Um, so Rose is a Damphir. And Damphir don't have to drink blood, but they have like more skills and whatnot um, from their vampire vampire heritage and so Lissa and Rose have this bond as like the guardian and the charge um and in the beginning of the book they had run away from this academy because Lissa thought that she was being hunted and they at the beginning of the book they get caught and they get brought back to the academy and so like in the time away like Rose really hasn't been able to keep up on her skills and so she gets assigned extra training with this seasoned guardian named Dimitri and Rose and Lissa are just like navigating through the academy social circles of all these like royal families and like relationships and other teenage things as well as like magical powers and this like psychic connection that they have because Rose can feel Lissa's feelings. It's so fun! It's just like such great nostalgic YA vibes and I will be continuing with the series. I had so much fun and yes. So now we are looking, oh my god, these covers are just like so peak YA. So now we have Frostbite and apparently this takes place during winter break because the tagline says when love and jealousy collide on the slopes, winter break turns deadly. Um, I think there's six books totals in this series and then a spin-off series. So I am very much looking forward to listening to these and I'm gonna try and especially when I'm doing lab work that like I don't need to be talking to other people I want to start listening to audiobooks more or just like when I'm doing chores and stuff like that because I love listening to music but there's only so much music I can listen to you know so this is fun so that's my audiobook TBR then my Kindle Unlimited TBR I want to leave it pretty open so that I can pick up what I'm feeling on a whim at that moment because my Kindle Unlimited library is just like this rotation of things that I like see quotes and they look cool and I like pick it up and like it's very spur of the moment but there is one book that I definitely want to get to this month <clears throat> and that is the third book in the What Lies Beyond the Veil series by Harper L. Woods. So we have what Lies Beyond the Veil and What Hunts Inside the Shadow. So I have been enjoying this series but I decided like there's going to be six books and I don't necessarily feel the need to own them all physically. So that is kind of like what I have been trying to do is like if it's available on Kindle or if it's available on audio and I know it's not going to be like a favorite favorite trying to use those other methods first instead of buying so that I can kind of reduce my book buying a little bit. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I've been trying but you know I'm also just a book collector to my core. So it's a balance. The third book in the series is called What Lurks Between the Fates. So this is the story of Estrella and Callum. So for 400 years there has been this veil that separate Fae from humans and the humans have kind of shifted to like worshipping these new gods in the absence of the Fae. And then we have Estrella who has been spending her life like tending to the gardens along this veil. So she's lived very close to the veil her whole life. So one day the veil shatters and it changes everything. And now there are humans that are fae marked, which means that they are a mate to a fae. And only like it's all, the pairing is usually only like fae and human. And so the fae want to come and find their mates not only to like have that kind of love but because they can only step fully into their powers when they have their mate. It's kind of like their mates are human as like some sort of checks and balances. So the misguard, the humans, don't want the Fae to get more powerful so they decide to kill everyone that is Fae marked and of course Estrella is Fae marked and she must run, she must escape, she must flee so that she is not killed. And so we have Calum who is a fellow Fae marked and they embark on a journey to run away together. So this next book is coming out soon and I'm very excited because it's very spicy and it's a very fun fantasy romance and I I just am truly enjoying the journey that it's taking me on. It's going to be six books so we're like at the halfway point so I will see what happens in this world but it is definitely keeping me intrigued and I'm tuning into each book as it is released. So one of the things that I just have been bad at my entire bookish career is NetGalley. I, I literally had to start a whole new account because I was like I just accepted too many books and there was no way I was going to dig myself out of the approval ratio that I was in. So I started a new NetGalley account but some of the books have started to accumulate so I am leaving it up to me to read through some of them. So I picked two books 
from my neck alley shelf to definitely put on my TBR and I can read these on my Kindle so it should make them like easier for me like if I just like want to read in bed or like if I want to read on the train or something like that. The first is a rom-com and it is The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. I read Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter last year and this is the follow-up novel that is about her brother, I'm pretty sure, the main character's brother from the first book. Hallie Piper is turning over a new leaf. After she crawls out of a hotel room, she's like, I've hit rock bottom and I'm just gonna become a full-on adult. So she downloads a dating app and there he is, none other than Jack, the man whose hotel room she crawled out of. So through the app, they make a joint agreement. They are becoming partners in their respective search for the one. And of course, they are not interested in each other. So they text about each of their dates. And when they go wrong, they of course meet up for tacos after. And they make a wager. Who can find true love first? And then they agree to be fake dates for a wedding. I mean, it just has all the tropes. I think it's just going to be really fun and like I love the idea of like a bet about like who's going to fall in love first because we all know how that's going to go. But this one just sounds so cute and fun and I adored Mr. Wrong Number when I read it last year. Again, I thought it was like adorable. It had spice. Like It was really good. So I'm really looking forward to reading this follow-up novel. The next book that I have on my net galley shelf that I want to read, I also have a physical arc of and that is Where Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hannah and this is horror. I have not read a young adult horror in a while, but I actually really love this genre. Um, I do believe this book is out now. Let's see what the publication date is. Yeah, it came out uh, February 21st. I mean, horror sunflowers. So it, the tagline is, Andrea Hannah's Where Darkest Bloom is a supernatural thriller about an eerie town where the sunflowers whisper secrets and the land hungers for blood. The town of Bishop is known for its endless windstorms and its fields full of sunflowers. So three mothers disappear one night and the case is closed and these mother's daughters are basically like left to fend for themselves with no explanation until the wind kicks up the terrible explanation for the mother's disappearance. And with secrets come lies and all of these girls are forced to confront their own lies. It just sounds so good. Like I said, I love horror and I haven't been reading enough of it. So very excited for this one and it will help me get my Nat Galley ratio back to where it should be because it's it's low right now. Okay, now moving on to just some physical books that I would like to read in the month of April. The first one is A Light in the Flame by Jennifer L. Armentrout. If you saw my March TBR, I had A Shadow in the Ember on there and this is the follow-up novel. Um, ooh, and I forgot I got my little pre-order bookmark pretty. This is the under the dust jacket. So I am currently filming a from Blood and Ash like catch up vlog with Shadow of the Ember, War of Two Queens, and A Light in the Flame. And I, this is the only one I haven't gotten to yet. So I would like to tackle it in April. Um, and this is the second in the Flesh and Fire series, which is the prequel series of From Blood and Ash. And in this world, we're following Sarah, who is a princess that has been training her whole life to become Death's consort. And then we have Niktos, who is the primal of death. And she has basically like been rejected until by him until like different events bring them together. And so there is so much information and like mythology that goes into this world. So we're basically like exploring um, a time when like the gods walked the earth which in the time of From Blood and Ash like all the gods are sleeping and not really much is known about the time like all of the kingdoms have changed so this is probably like thousands of years before the start of From Blood and Ash and we learn about these characters that are going to definitely become important in the From Blood and Ash world. I loved Sarah and Nikdos in the first book and the ending the ending of the First book left me a little stunned and so I'm very excited to start this one and to finally be caught up on From Blood and Ash and I think the next book that's coming out in this world is the first From Blood and Ash book in Castile's point of view which very excited about. Then these next two books, if you saw my spring reads recommendations like this will look familiar to you but I really wanted to read these two spring books. The first one being The Poison Season by Mara Rutherford. Mara Rutherford has beautiful writing, one of my favorite covers ever. Um, so this is about Lilo and she lives on this enchanted island of Ensla and they do not let any outsiders in. There is this, this bloodthirsty forest around the island that will protect them as well as the island is in a poisonous lake. And so no outsiders are allowed in. So Lilo sees a young outsider on the verge of drowning in this poisonous lake and she does the unthinkable and saves him, which is betraying everything that she's ever been taught about this island and their, her community's way of life. 
but she begins to question whether the danger is really from the outside or within the community itself. Just like anything that's in nature and like plant-based just gives me spring vibes and I just adore this cover. I know Mara Rutherford has beautiful writing and I'm very excited to read it. So one other book that I need to finish that I started reading and then put down is The Wicked King by Holly Black and I put this down because I had like a life event happen and I really didn't want this series to be affected by that life event and like I don't want to get into the details. That's just what happened. Um, I'm okay and I'm doing better mentally now. So I feel ready to pick this back up because I was rereading the series in anticipation of The Stolen Heir. So I don't want to put the other books on my TBR because this is already a pretty stacked TBR, but I do want to at least finish this. I was on page 153. Um, the Cruel Prince is the story of Jude and she was abducted from her mother and father just living a normal life um, when she was a child and has been brought to live in fairy and raised by a fairy general and in the land of Elfheim. Um, she really wants to prove herself and become a knight for one of the princes um, and so she kind of gets into some scheming to be able to prove herself to these fairies um, being that she is just a lowly human um, and we also have Prince Cardin who is one of these princes that her scheming kind of brings him in and I just love the dynamic of these two. This is such a good series and these books aren't that long either. Um, I was really enjoying rereading them and I'm, I'm hoping I can just get right back into it when I pick this book up again. The last book on my TBR is a cottagecore fantasy called Flower Heart, A Power She Can't Control, A Curse She Can't Undo, A Boy She Can't Forget. And this is by Catherine Bakewell. And in this book we follow Clara and she has wild magic but has never been out of control until the day that she touches her father and causes poisonous flowers to bloom in his chest. Now she needs a powerful spell to be able to undo the damage and she turns to her former childhood best friend Xavier who has gone from shy to mysterious. Xavier asks for a terrible price in return, knowing Clara would do anything for her father, and she begins to uncover some of the dark secrets that are causing him to act this way that is very out of character from the boy that she knew growing up. And she, as she hunts for the truth, she finds the roots of a terrible darkness that is taking hold in the queendom, and only her magic might be able to save them. It's just, this cover is everything to me. I adore it, and I really hope I adore this book. Also, I think the back is so cute. Like, look at all these potions. Like, this, this is what I want my springtime to be. Like, just, like, flowers and beauty and nature. Like, yes. All right, guys, that is my April TBR. Again, this is my birthday month, so I'm very excited for April in general. I also got engaged on my birthday, so it is the one-year anniversary of my engagement as well this month, April 26th. Just all around, very, very excited for this month. If you've watched this far, please put a little birthday cake emoji. Um, let me know down below what you are most looking forward to reading in April, and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.